Two years ago, I released a video that made me never want to touch this game again. And now we're doing the sequel. Over the course of a week, I played 100 games of 2v2. I documented my wins, my losses, my MMR throughout, and everything I learned from an intensive look into the game mode. Today, I'm going to go over everything for you. I'll cover what I learned to hopefully help out those of you who are struggling with twos or just want an easier time ranking up. Also, please note that the advice in this video isn't rank specific. Many, if not all of these tips can be implemented across each rank. Now let's get started. One of the very first things I started to notice about my gameplay actually only occurred to me thanks to apparently Jack. But I promise you it is not in any way that you think. Now, apparently Jack is an incredibly talented individual on and off the pitch. And I've been watching a lot of his YouTube videos recently. But Jack mentioned in a video that he used to be quite a good tennis player. And strangely enough, that tiny sentence from Jack actually helped me to figure something out. Because I also used to play tennis. And at the age of 13, my tennis coach gave me advice that I never now, 11 years later, has started bringing it into my Rocket League games. Yeah, kind of weird, I, I know. My coach told me that tennis is a game that is lost, not won. In tennis, you lose a game through unforced errors, unprovoked mistakes you make that the opponent can easily take advantage of. You rally the ball back and forth until someone gives even a tiny bit, and then the opponent has an opening to go on the offensive. Now, 11 years later, I realized this and started applying it to my Rocket League games. Everyone on the pitch starts with the same amount of boost on each kickoff. It is then up to you and how you maneuver around the pitch and the decisions you make, and then once you make a mistake, the opponent gets a chance to take advantage. In twos, this can mean you either putting your teammate in a 1v2 situation or just conceding yourself. Now, yes, I will admit this sounds like a very long-winded story that just says, hey, make less mistakes. But it's more than that. I started going into my replays and I counted just how many of these small mistakes I was making. Things that at the time I wouldn't really look at as a mistake because you can very easily just fix them by doing a few things here and there. But if you focus on not making the mistake in the first place, you have so much more room to pressure the opponent. If you can go back through your replays and you note things down where you give the opponent a chance to go on the offensive, you will see so many times you've made these little mistakes. Now this can be in the form of a bad first touch, poor boost management, giving the ball away for free, a bad shot, slow aerials, bad rotations. Literally just go into your own replay and be so hypercritical of yourself and you will see the times that you let the other team have an advantage. You'll see all the times you let your opponents win because of a small mistake which becomes a goal two or three plays down the line. Now, none of us are perfect. We can't play perfect Rocket League and so we will all make many mistakes in every game we play. The difference between the players that are improving and the ones that aren't are the players that are improving know that they're making these mistakes and they're doing something about it. And the ones that aren't are passing them off as one-off accidents. So understand your mistakes, own your mistakes, and then look to remove your mistakes. This was something that came up in the first 20 games or so and ended ended up being very helpful long term. After the first 20 games, I was sitting at 10 wins and 10 losses. So not bad, really. I hadn't moved much MMR wise, but I was feeling like I was playing better. Up until this challenge, I had been playing almost exclusively 3v3s because it's the game mode I feel I need to work on the most. But this had actually led to some problems in my 2v2 games. In threes, you are almost always being pressured and challenged. In twos, you have way more time with the ball and way more boost to work with. And once I realized that, I started winning a lot more. At first, I found myself making those small mistakes like giving the ball away for free all the time or rotating back too far because I was so used to the threes play style of being pressured after a second on the ball and having to rotate to be the third man. But after looking into that a bit more and taking some time, I found myself maintaining possession a lot more and actually having more impact whenever I had the ball. There is so much time to take advantage of in a 2v2 match that you can often actually just get away with taking a touch and slowing the game down rather than worrying and hitting it away in a panic. And this is where that big difference from the 3v3 games that I played for about a month straight going into the 2v2s came out. A big thing to note with the 2v2 game mode is that a single 1v1 challenge that you win will put you in a massive advantage. If you take a 50-50 challenge and you win, you are now in a 1v1 situation at minimum and potentially a 2v1 if your teammate is nearby. This means all you have to do as a player is to get good at 50-50s and being in a 1v1 scenario and then you can very easily solo carry your 2v2 games. At this point it doesn't 
matter what your teammate really does all game. If you can win your 1v1 situations, you're going to rank up so quickly. Now, I'm sure you know what's coming next. And yes, it is just play more 1v1s. The downside here is that personally, I hate 1v1s because it reminds me that I'm bad at the game and I make more mistakes than you can possibly imagine. But hey, if you want to improve, you should really genuinely look to play more ones in order to get better at twos. 50 games in and we are at 29 wins to 21 losses, sitting at 16-16 MMR. We're doing pretty well. I've climbed back up to Grand Champ 2 where I spent a lot of my time last season and during the next 50 games, I learned some very important lessons. Lesson 1, demos can be very helpful to win games. Now, some of you hate them, I know, but oh my god, if you can get good at demoing and doing so without taking yourself out of the game, not only only are you clearing space for your teammate to make a play, but you're just annoying to play against. And so if the other team tilts, they are going to play worse. Now, how do I know this? Well, I know this because I got demo hunted for about six games in a row and somehow my controller is still in one piece. That being said, you can very easily see just how effective demos can be when you start to implement them into your own gameplay. Not going for them all the time, just trying to go for them every now and then when you can and they don't take you away from the gameplay. I don't need to go into this one too much. I'm sure we all know demos are good when you get them and the worst part of the game when they're used against you. One of the biggest things I picked up on in around my final 20 games or so was the effectiveness of passing and just how dangerous it can be when it's done wrong. Now, I was someone who always wanted to try and pass and work with my twos teammate and I could never really understand why some people just don't pass the ball. And then it became clear to me, passing the ball all the time in twos is both predictable and commits both players to the play. This means if you make some sort of passing play and you get immediately counted, it can be very difficult to get back in time and stop the counter attack. However, when you pass the ball in the right situations, it can be almost impossible to stop. So which situations are worth the pass and which should you try to avoid? Well, I would say the ones that are good passes are the passes that can't be challenged. This is often in a situation where your opponents are either scrambling to get back on defense or you're in a 1v2 scenario and they've committed to the first play with the ball. Now, if you pass the ball to a player that can be challenged either as the ball arrives to them or beforehand, you are putting them under immediate immediate pressure and they have to shoot straight away or they will lose the ball. Whereas passing the ball to someone who can't be challenged, you can almost guarantee a goal as it forces the opponent to quickly shift their focus and in those moments you will find gaps in their defense. As you will see from the clips going on from my twos game, you can see where a simple pass has completely opened up the game and allowed me to get a shot on net without a challenge. The other thing I will say about passes is I think that passing from the wall or while mid air is almost too risky to even attempt because while in the air you can't react to anything that happens. Happens. So if your teammate loses possession of the ball and you are still falling, there is nothing you can do. Now then, the final result. At the end of the week, after 100 games of 2v2s, our result ended up being 55 wins to 45 losses and finished up at 16.21 MMR. During this time, I peaked at 16.55 MMR and ended up playing a decent amount of games against some top 16 players and a few of the APAC pros, which, although can be a little frustrating when you're getting clapped, can obviously be very helpful when you watch the replays back. Now another small issue is around GC1, GC2 you can find a fair few amount of smurfs just because the queue time in Oceania is quite long and they want to play some games. Once again, you can learn from these games, just gets a little bit frustrating, especially when I'm trying to make a video like this about progression up the ranks. But the plus side is that a week after I played these 100 games and took everything on board, I actually managed to climb up to 1691 MMR and got one game away from my all time peak of 1697. This would have been the first time I hit 1700 in my life. But then in classic Oceania fashion, I ran into Amphist from Team Power three games in a row and I lost it all. So you win some, you lose some. And oh boy, did I lose some. But hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to leave a like as it does help the channel out immensely. And if you do want to see more, subscribe so you don't miss out on new content. Next week's video will be 100 games with threes where I'll be breaking down what I learned the same way I did these games. And I can already tell you they are very, very different game modes when you break it all the way down. Anyway, that is all from me and I will see you next time.